All right, second take. So, uh, hello, welcome to the first in a set of videos. I guess what I'm gonna call my weird cameras. Uh, there's no format just yet. There probably will be someday. This takes entirely natural light. I'm trying to do this with essentially zero knowledge of practical videography and just the tools I've got. So, what is this? This is an Olympus Pen EES2, as you can tell by the top of the camera. And, well, you might have heard that these days Kodak is uh, pr putting out a half-frame camera. That turns out is not a new idea. In fact, this is a half-frame camera. This is one of a series of half-frame cameras produced during the 60s by Olympus. Olympus has pretty much always been good at making good small cameras, and this is one of them. This is... This model is produced from 1968 to 1971. It's basically a consumer model with auto, with full auto exposure and a hot shoe instead of a cold shoe, even though it does still have the old sync cord. Also, uh, other weird things about this. This is program auto exposure, no battery. So, this is what's called a selenium cell. Before we had silicon solar cells, selenium was the first tech we discovered for that. And in this case, the camera is powered by its meter. So, features. Exposure counter goes up past 72. That seems reasonable. You put in a 36 exposure roll of film, you might get 37 or 38 exposures, this will at least get you to 30 to 74. See, you know, so okay. Uh, shutter button's a little strange. It is very minimal. It's just enough to, uh, that you could stick in a cable release and it'll operate. Film Advance is like a disposable camera. So you look. Yeah, I've got a chip out of mine, but uh, viewfinder has bright lines and a couple little at the top that uh, a couple little at the top for uh, basically parallax correction when you're up close because this one is not fixed focal, unlike a disposable camera. If you look at the top here, okay, well we got an ASA runs from. 25 I can runs from 25 to 400 a folk zone based focus system so it starts at obviously infinity focus for landscapes goes to I think this is about 10 feet in between I forget about three feet, or about, what, three and a half feet? And just past it is three feet, basically. And then an aperture dial. Now, the trick, yes, you can do manual, but the trick is it will lock your shutter down to 1 40th of a second, which isn't really going to be practical outdoors. Because when you think about it, 1 40th at 22, yeah, maybe you could do ISO 80 film in this, which they don't make anymore. So instead, it's mostly meant to be used in auto, where it will select the aperture and it will select from between 40 or 200 shutter and do it for you. Now, operation. Obviously, point pointy end goes toward the target, you push the button. Right now it is locking me out because I've turned this to auto. And there's just not enough light indoors. Or maybe there is. Maybe there's too much. Yeah. Yeah, not enough light indoors. So if I turn this back to manual. Oh, actually, I forgot to rewind. Yeah, at 400 there's enough indoors. 
uh, lens, by the way, is called Zoico, but everything Olympus is. It's a f1 over 2.8, 30 millimeter. Uh, so at the about, what, 1.4 crop factor of this, that should be 30, 42 millimeters. So, eh, decent. It's a little wide, but not 35, you know, in between. Basically a pancake lens. And then, well, how do you operate this thing? So there's that. You've already seen the wind. This is pretty obvious what it is. If you see most manual focus cameras, there's your rewind. Now you'd think you'd open it with the rewind, but you don't. You do have to pull it out if you're gonna pull your film out, obviously. There's a tab here that's basically directly connected to the latches, and that's how you open it. Wind your film across, get this aligned, stick your film in the tongue, tongue and back to manual and as you can see it will wind under that and you know, if you notice this is about the right size you could cut this out and get a full frame I think that's more or less what the trip 35 AF is I've got a full proper pressure plate and that's pretty much all there is. I, there's not much to this camera, but does it take good photos? Uh, yeah, I'd say it does. It's uh, pretty decent. Now, obviously, I probably should replace the seals in this now. It's been 10 years or more since I fired this thing off. But, you know, it, quality shots. I think I could get 8x10 with a good film scanner or a good enlarger. And doesn't need batteries sharp enough yeah overall you know, if you're shooting film you're probably shooting in daylight and it ought to work for that <laughs>